Hello, this video is an introduction to the computer science concept of lists. The things we'll be covering in this video will be defining variables generally, defining lists of data, navigating through lists, and synchronized lists. Earlier in this course, we did an app. It was the Slideshow app. It featured pictures, images of the Golden State Warriors, and we transitioned through those images using an if, else, if, and else conditional block. With that said, this solution is suboptimal, and that is because the code explicitly references file names. This only works for the specific set of pictures embedded in this code. For context, this app was originally created with Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant signed with another team. Thusly, I had to rewrite the entire app to fit a different player. Now, had I used lists, that would have taken a significantly less amount of time because ultimately code should be designed so that it can work generically on any data. So the solution that I wish I had come up with, which I am now, is to use lists in this app. And because that allows us to store and manipulate the data and changes to the lists, say substituting Kevin Durant for Andrew Wiggins, does not affect the code overall. So the way the code looks now rather the way the app looks now, it does in fact work. When we click the next button, we move from, well, we would start with Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Andrew Wiggins, the current Warriors. Alrighty, let's get into using lists here. So the first thing we need to do in order to, find, uh, to use lists is define it. And actually, we start with a variable. So I have here the code from our original slideshow app. And the first thing I'm going to do in order to transition this from the conditional block to using a list is I need to initialize a variable, and we'll call this variable the picture list. And I'm not going to give it a value just yet, because what I want to show you is once you've set up the variable the picture list, you actually pull out a list block from the block menu, and it will start off with a couple numbers which we will pull out. So bring back the project. And we'll go under lists, we'll grab a list block, and instead of the numbers, we actually want the name, we're going to store the name of the images. So for list one, we want the Steph JPG or JPEG, and position two, we want Clay, position three, we want Draymond, and actually we'll click on the blue rotary to expand this, and we'll bring in one more item, we'll click on that blue rotor again to get it to go away, and we will actually, how can we get this easily? We just duplicate Wiggins here. Not easily. Okay, so we actually just got to type Wiggins in. I'm just going to type Wiggins in. And we know that this is Wiggins spelled incorrectly, but that's the way it is sometimes. Dot JPG. Okay, let's go on to the next step here. So we've got our list created. It'll look something like that. And we removed the numbers and we added some initial values. So Curry, Thompson, Green, and Wiggins. So we have to think about now a new concept of an index. And the index is essentially the position or the location where each one of our uh, images or our files is stored. So in our list, which is called picture list, we have four files, Curry, Thompson, Green, and Wiggins. And their positions within this list, their index value is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we think of a list as a set or a series of memory cells. Each of these cells has a, a, a numbered location or an index number, and we always start with 1. So in our list, Curry is the index number 1, Thompson is index number 2, Green is index number 3, Wiggins is index number, number 4. So the next thing we need to think about is how do we get each individual element from this list in order to use it. So we're going to use a very specific block. It's the in list get. And here it'll have a generic A and B, but we can pull in the variable which indicates our picture list and we'll be able to get to number one. So let's do that real quick. So let's add that block to our coding here as we're recoding the slideshow app to incorporate lists. First thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to dump all this code here, which is now superfluous as we're transitioning our code here. We are going to build uh, the, the way to, 
to actually grab a specific item of the list. So it'll be actually just duplicate that one. But what we really need is the in list block or get the get block. Here we go. So in except we don't actually need this block anymore. We need the specific variable that leads us to this list. So the the picture list variable. And in this case, if we clicked it in, this would set when button one is clicked, it would set the slideshow image picture to the picture list at position one, which is Steph. But here's the thing. That would allow us ultimately to access Steph Curry or the Steph Curry picture. But given what we now know, the reason that we're transitioning to list from simply if and if else and else blocks, this is really inefficient because in order to get to each block or rather each um, image in our list, we would need to have a different event every time we want to move through. So in order to get it set up under one event or really just to navigate through our list efficiently, we're going to need a new thing, which is an index variable. And so what the index variable does is it keeps track of the index or which element, the index number of the element that you are accessing. So as we saw in the image before, if Steph Curry is position one, the index number is technically one, and we can keep track of that with a variable. So I'll show you how to do that. So what's, why don't we initialize this variable just so we can keep track of it. And And we'll start the index at one. All right. Okay, so now that we've got this index variable, we can set it up within uh, an event such that when the, the, the next button or the button is clicked, it will change the value of the, the index variable. So we know it's starting at one, which is equivalent to Steph Curry. Every time we click the next button, it will go up in value by one. And the image that we see will be equal. So we set the image picture to whatever is in this list at position, whatever the index is. So now that the index is two, it'll grab from picture list uh, position two. So when we get that coded in, so instead of going to one, we want it set to the index. And every time the button is clicked actually we want to change the value of the index by one so each time we click the index goes up by one and the uh, image that we're going to see is going to pull from image index or rather the in the picture list at whatever the index value is let's add one more thing here even though we're initialized to one let's just make sure it resets every time screen one opens so we want to make sure that we are setting the index to one every time the screen opens. In which case we actually will change this piece of code because we, we want it to work under any circumstances. For some reason we took Steph Curry out. So let me do this in a simpler way. We dump this piece of code and the index should be there. And then every time our screen opens, it'll be set to index one. And in this case it would be Steph, but if we changed our list, then instead of having to redo all this uh, code and whoever, whatever, image was at the first position that would pop up. All right, let's go on to the next thing. Um, okay, so that's our better solution and what that would look like if we're going through, uh, if, we're, if we have all of our list elements laid out here, we have, again, two variables, our index variable and our picture list, uh, our list being set up as a set of a variable as a data type. Um, the property that the image picture is gonna be set to because we're at image uh, index one is curry and it'll show as curry on our screen so um, we've got that we know that when the index changes uh, the image shown will change be changed based on the image uh, index value if we clicked it again and the index went up to two we would be able to access the second item in the picture list which is thompson so the property of the image picture would be changed and we'd end up with looking at Clay Thompson, looking at his hand. Okay, here's a common bug, and this is pretty important. We have to think about what would happen if our index value exceeded the number of items in our list. So our list actually has four items, but what would happen if now, because the index value is going up every time we click the button, if it 
if it, the index were equal to 5, we had come across some sort of error in the program. So the way we fix that is, well, a simple answer, something you're probably already used to from trying to assess whether timers are equal to 0 or scores are equal to certain values or lives are equal to certain values. You could use a conditional. So if we already knew in advance that our list was going to be equal to 4 items, then we could say if the index variable is greater than 4, then we want to reset it to 1. But knowing what we know, something that we've been going through, is we want to make sure this code will work under, basically, we want this code to essentially be generic in the sense that it can work under however we switch up our list, for example. So we need to do something slightly different. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this block. It's called the length of list block. And what that does is it checks, it'll give you, it's essentially a variable that will be equal to whatever the length of list is and it doesn't matter if you change the length of the list. It will always be consistent and thusly it will work for any code. So why don't we do that in our code. We'll make that change or we'll, we'll add that to our code. So we'll add a conditional here. So if the, uh, see the index variable is greater Let's switch this up to a greater than the length of our list, which is the picture list. Then we should set the index value to one, and in that way, our our will essentially come back to the beginning of our list if that's what we're saying. Okay, that's how we solve that bug. What else? What else should we know about lists here? Okay, here's the last part that I want to show you. So now we have one list and it's working off of one index variable. But imagine we want to have two lists and we want them to run at the same time. So we already have a list that is all the images of these Warriors players. What if we added a label that was going to show their, their names alongside the image? And it, obviously that list would be, uh, it, it would be essentially be the same list, except names, names not uh, images. And we want them to run at the same time. So let's see how we can do that. Um, we can essentially synchronize these lists. So we create the second list of the names and define them as, as items that they're correlated to the, uh, the picture list. And importantly, we will not need a second index variable. So why don't we do that? We'll get this set up here. We'll see, see what that might look like. So get this out of the way. I'm going to just copy this because it'll be a little easier. And I'll rename it name list. And then switch this up to Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins, and we'll spell his name correctly. All right, and actually, let me just go to the design screen and I'm going to add a label so we can watch this as it works. So I'll get this label in here. Wait, well, let me put it right there. Where's this label at now? Okay, too high. I want it right. I will put it on the slideshow. And we'll give it a little space from the top. And we'll make it a little bigger. Okay, and so now what we can do is since we have this parallel list or the synchronized list and we already have one index variable, all we got to do is copy this over, we'll set the uh, our label, our new label, why are they giving me an error here, there we go, and we'll set the name list to, okay, so now as you can see I probably should have given the name, it'd be easier to follow, if we have the slideshow image that's set to the picture list at the app index and we should have the label which will be set to the name list at the same index variable. And actually, let me do the same thing here. And voila, let's see what this looks like. All right, so we've got Steph Curry, the image, Steph Curry, the label. We got Clay Thompson, the image, Clay Thompson, the label, Draymond Green, the image, Draymond Green, the label, Andrew Wiggins, the image, Andrew Wiggins, the label. Okay. That's about as much as you need to know about lists.